Hi everyone and welcome to this video about the sum of arithmetic sequences. If you enjoy this video please remember to like and subscribe and if you have any questions about the video or you would like me to make a maths video on another topic of your choice leave that down in the comment section below. We're going to start off by thinking about this problem where we're asked to sum together all of the counting numbers 1 to 100, so that's 1 plus 2 plus 3, all the way up to plus 99 plus 100. Now, of course, we could sit down and type all of these numbers into our calculator, or do it by hand, that would be even longer, but we're going to find a smarter way of doing this. I'm going to first write out my sequence in the correct order, so 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 100. So I've put dot 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 there to show that I've omitted writing some of that sequence. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take the same sequence and write it backwards. So I'm going to start with 100, 99, 98, 97, dot dot dot, all the way down back to 1. So I'm going to pay particular attention now to the pairs of numbers that are on top of each other. So I've written one sequence in the correct direction, one sequence in reverse. And what's happened is that I have these pairs of numbers above and below that sum together to be 101. All of these pairs add up now to be 101. And this is going to work with any sequence, where if we take the first and the last term, sum them together, we take the second and the second to last term and sum them together, the answer is always going to be the same. And I'm going to show you algebraically in a second. But for this particular question, I know I have 100 numbers. So I have 100 101s. However, I've written my sequence down two times. So if I wanted to just sum together 1 to 100 and not another 1 to 100, I'd have to take half of what I just did, which is 5050. This is a very common problem. This, this is called Gauss's problem. And it shows that we can use the sequence in the forward direction and then in the reverse direction very cleverly to quickly work out the sum of a sequence. Now we're going to have a look at doing this algebraically. So starting with my first term, which I'm going to use a to replace, and the common difference for my arithmetic sequence is going to be d, so the second term can be written as a plus d, the next term a plus 2d, so on and so forth, up to the last term, which is going to be a plus n minus 1d. So this is going to be my nth term. And if you don't know why this would be a plus n minus 1d, I suggest you check out my other video. We can also have the term just before, so that would be a plus n minus 2d. And the reason for that is if you remember, we have as the coefficient of d one less than the value of n. Because the term number is n minus 1, the coefficient of d has to be one less than that, so it's n minus 2. I can then write this sequence back to front, so a plus n minus 1d will be underneath a, a plus n minus 2d will be underneath the second term, a plus n minus 3d underneath the third. On the other end we will have a plus d and then a. Summing together then these two terms we find we have 2a plus n minus 1d. Okay, so we have that as our first pair of terms. For the second pair then, let's sum those together, we find it's 2a plus d plus n minus 2d. However, we can simplify this. We can expand this bracket out. And after this step, we can see we can factorize out a d. So it's going to be 2a plus n minus 1 so exactly the same as what we expected. And summing together the next two terms, we'll find that it's also 2a plus n minus 1d. We can see that any of these pairs of terms in my sequences are going to sum together to be 2a plus n minus 1d. This is equivalent to the 101 that we worked out in the previous numerical example. I know that I have n terms in total, so I'm going to multiply this expression by n, and this is going to sum together these two sequences for me. I'm then going to have to divide by 2 because I only want one sequence, so timesing by a half gives us our final formula for the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence. Now we don't have to remember what I've just shown you, we don't have to remember this proof for most exam boards. 
In fact, this equation, this final white equation that I've written is more often than not given to you in the formula booklet for the exam. However, I think it's very useful to see how we got this formula and it aids us in remembering it as well. Let's take a look at an example together. Here we have an arithmetic series. So series is when we have everything summed together, sequence is the numbers just with commas in between them. So for this arithmetic series, we know that the common difference is going to be three and the first term is going to be four. However, I don't know how many terms I actually have. So I'm going to need to take 151 and set that equal to my nth term formula, which is a plus n minus one d. Now I can substitute in the a and the d that I found. And once I've done this, I can rearrange and find n, which will tell me the number of my term 151. I find that the number of the term 151 is 50, so I'm summing together the first 50 terms of my series. So let's note down our formula for the sum of the first n terms. What we're going to do is sum together the first 50 terms, so we want s of the first 50 terms, which is 50 over 2. Now I'm going to use a, which I found, which is 4. So 2 times 4 plus 50 minus 1 and then times by 3. If I solve that, I can just pop it into the calculator, I get 3875. Let's take a look at this example question here. We're told the first term is 5, so let's label a equals 5 to begin with. The 20th term is 81. The information that's missing so far is the value of the common difference, so I need to use this value of 20 and 81 to work that out. Let's write down our nth term formula, and I know that when this is equal to 81, the value of n is 20, a is 5, so I can write down this equation here. Let's rearrange and solve this for d. So the common difference for my question here is going to be positive 4. Now I need to use my sum of the first nth term formula. I know that I'm looking for the first 30 terms, so n is 30 in this case. Let's plug that in. And the final answer is 1890. So for this question, you can see that we first had to work out the missing unknown variables for my formula for both the nth term and the sum of the first n terms. Let's take a look at this example here. The first term of an arithmetic series is minus 6. That means we can write straight away that a equals minus 6. The sum of the first 30 terms is written down here. So we know that s of 30 is going to be 30 over 2. We're going to replace a with minus 6. And we know that this equates to 2865. So using this expression here, we can now calculate the value of d. So let's rearrange and solve for that then. Now we have the values of a and d. I can rewrite my nth term formula. I know I want to find the ninth term, so n equals 9, and the answer is going to be 50. Let's have a look at another example together. Here we are given everything in terms of letters, but that's not a problem at all. As long as we understand the formula and we know what everything means, we should be able to solve this just the same. The sum of the first two n terms is four times the sum of the first n terms of the series. This is where the information to solve this question lies. Let's try and find an expression for the first two n terms summed together. So I'm going to replace n in the sum formula with 2n. And I need also the sum of the first n terms of the series. Now I know that the sum formula on the left is four times of the sum formula on the right. So I can simplify this first one and say that it's four times the formula on the right.
I'm just going to simplify this on both sides now. I can see that this middle term is going to cancel on both sides. I can rearrange now to have 2nd minus nd equal 4an minus 2an. Now I can divide both sides by n, so all of those n's get cancelled out, and I'm left with the expression 2d minus d on the left, which is just d, and on the right, 4a minus 2a, which is just 2a. So it wants an expression for a in terms of d, so we need to make a the subject of the formula. I'm just going to divide both sides by 2 then, so a equals a half d. Let's look at this tricky example here. We are given this series, which is an arithmetic series, but we can see that it's all in terms of these fractions and k. We're given that the 15th term of the series is 90 plus 2k. And we're asked to calculate the sum of the first 30 terms. First of all, we can write down that a is going to be k, and we know that the common difference d is going to be minus 1 over 4k. So we can work this out by subtracting these terms that are next to each other. So k minus 3 over 4k is going to be 1 over 4k, so we're subtracting 1 over 4k each time. So we can write an nth term formula in terms of k for now. So this is going to be my nth term formula for now. This is the value of a, n minus 1, multiplied by d. The 15th term of the series is given to us. So I'm going to replace n with 15, and I'm going to set this equal to what they gave us, which is 90 plus 2k. Multiplying out the left-hand side gives us an expression that we can now solve for k, and we find k is minus 20. So we can now go in and replace our initial term a with minus 20, and the difference with minus 5. Now let's use our sum formula to work out the sum of the first 30 terms. And placing this into my calculator, I find it's minus 2,775. Thank you for watching this video. I'm glad you've made it all the way to the end. If you have any questions about the video, remember you can leave them down in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.